a meeting the other night, and all the faithful guards were getting together to have a testimony meeting. Somebody said, preacher, I can't give money. I don't have any money. But do you have prayer? Amen. Can you call the BBS director and say, look, I want you to understand that I don't have any gifts to bring, but I want you to know that I need you to give me a list of every teacher that you have, and I commit to, that at 3 o'clock every day, I will pray for each teacher that you have in the program. There's something you can do. Maybe you just do not have anything to do, but you could come down and say, I know I don't get off work till 6 o'clock, but tell BBS just to lock the church and I'll come by. I'll clean up after them and set up for the next morning. Is there anybody that understands that you have ministry yeah. and that your ministry is affected by your lifestyle and the potency of your ministry Oh uh, my God, depends on how you conduct uh, yourself. Uh, well, I want us to know, I want us to know, I want us to know, uh, according to scripture, Christ has great expectations for his body. Amen. Y'all didn't hear me clearly. Let me be plain. I said Christ has great expectations uh, for his body. Uh, Amen. Timothy, uh, he has great expectations uh, for us. Uh, I want to serve notice on everyone that's under the sound of my voice. Uh, and I want you to go home and get on the telephone. Uh, and I want you to dial those seven digits uh, and call somebody and tell them uh, you have ministry. Uh, uh, tell them that their ministry uh, is needed uh, in the house of God. Uh, the church, the church, uh, he expects every Christian whom he has saved uh, to be active in using the gifts uh, and their talents uh, that he has given them for ministry. Uh, I remember I heard one of the old mothers uh, say, God did not save you to sit down on the seat of do nothing. Uh, that when God saved you, he saved you to be active uh, in the church. Uh, let me share something that disturbed me as I began uh, to prepare this message. Uh, I found out there was a Gallup poll survey uh, uh, which discovered uh, that only 10% of American church members uh, are active in any kind of ministry. Did you understand that? Only 10% of American church members are active in ministry. That means for every 100 members, only 10 are active in ministry. Well, the survey goes on to share some more disturbing news. They said and 50% of the church members have no interest or desire to even become at all involved in ministry. They are simply content with coming to the morning worship service, hearing the preacher preach and the choir sing. Amen. I said, well, that's not our church. Well, I dare to beg to differ. Check the numbers that we have and list it in the role as members uh, and see how many of them are in active ministry. Uh -huh. hmm. uh -huh. My God, my God, let me, let me encourage you, my friends. Uh, we have at our church, uh, and Deacon Grace teaches it, uh, uh, the 301 class, uh, and it's called Discovering My Shape for Ministry. Uh, uh, today I want you to look uh, at what the Bible has to say for, about ministry, uh, the importance of ministry. I hope that after today, uh, anyone that is not in ministry uh, will get in ministry. Uh, and those of you that are in ministry, that you'll be faithful to ministry. Uh, because some people are in the choir, but they never show up for choir rehearsal. Some folk are in the choir, but they only do two out of four choir rehearsals. Uh, some folk are in the usher's ministry, the nurse's ministry, or whatever ministry that you're in, uh, but your whole heart uh, is not in it. Uh, somebody give God a praise. Come on and celebrate God. Uh, give him a praise. Uh, if you dare, give God a praise. Uh, and proclaim uh, that I'm going to be in ministry. Uh, mm. 
If we want to really know about ministry, uh, we've got to look at the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, do you understand? It, it was Jesus. I didn't make this up. I didn't make this up. It was Jesus himself that proclaimed. But even the Son of Man came not to serve, but uh, came not to be served, excuse me, but to serve and gave his life as a ransom. Uh, my God, my God, what do we do in, in ministry? Uh, we need to follow the mark of Jesus. Uh, too many of us want to sit at the head table. Too many of us uh, want to be the big eye and the little you. Uh, but God is not calling the big eyes or little you's. Uh, he's calling for us all to be on the same page. Uh, is there anybody in the house uh, that understands what I'm saying? Uh, well, all throughout the New Testament, uh, we see those who are involved in service. Uh, we see the apostles. We see ministers. Uh, we see elders. We see deacons. We see teachers. Uh, we see church members. Uh, and they all have this one thing in common. Uh, they are all serving uh, in ministry. Uh, but if you allow me, I want to just take time uh, to give you three points and then I'll be through. Uh, well, you got to first understand uh, that we, when we do ministry, uh, we do it unto the Lord. Uh, is there anybody that understands uh, that your ministry is not to make you look good? Uh, your ministry, oh, I wish I had a praying church. Uh, your ministry is not there uh, that you can say, look at what I'm doing. Uh, your ministry is not there uh, that you can say, look what I have done. Uh, but your ministry is to bring glory uh, to God. Uh, somebody said uh, that while they were worshiping uh, the Lord uh, and fasting, uh, the Holy Spirit said, uh, set apart Barnabas uh, and Saul. What for the word uh, to which I have uh, called them. Uh, I want you to know today uh, that God is calling uh, you to ministry. Uh, God is calling you uh, to service. Uh, somebody say glory to God. Uh, God's calling you uh, to service. Uh, come on and say thank you. Thank you. Calling you uh, that you may come uh, and hear the word of God. Uh, ah, you got to understand. Uh, it was the same apostle. Uh, Paul reminds us in Colossians 3 and 17. Uh, that whosoever, who, uh, whatever you do uh, in word and or in deed, uh, do everything uh, in the name uh, of the Lord. Uh, giving thanks uh, to God. The Father through him. Is there anybody uh, that can give God praise uh, through your ministry? Uh, say, God, uh, everything that I do uh, in the house of God, uh, let it bring glory to you. Uh, every time I give uh, in the mission offering, uh, let it bring glory to you. Uh, can I get about seven people uh, just really uh, to say, God, uh, I want you to use me. Uh, God, I want you to use me. Uh, God, I want you to use me uh, in ministry. Uh, give me another opportunity, God, uh, that I might come uh, and minister. Mm. I don't know about you, but that does something for me, preachers. I'm concerned about my ministry. Lord, what am I doing? Am I doing it the right way? How many times do we have to labor before the presence of God, before we preach? God, is this really your word for the church? God, remove the obstacles. God, remove the hindrances. And the barriers. God, let your word go forth unhindered and unbound. God, let me decrease that you may increase. Move on the hearts of the people, God, that they might receive your word. You've got to understand everything you do. Do it to the glory of God. When you usher down the aisle, don't strut to be struck. But do it for the glory of God. When you stand in ministry, to stand to pray over the offering, you're not praying to have eloquent words, but you're praying that God might bless the little that we have, that he might be glorified. Choir, musicians, every 
it kind and tickle the ivories. Uh, make sure you do it uh, to the glory of God. Uh, steppers, uh, every time you step, uh, make sure you step uh, to the glory of God. Uh, wait a minute, uh, let me go so far as to say, uh, when you're sitting down uh, on the bench, uh, you ought to give God praise. Uh, you ought to be able to wave your hand. Uh, Sometimes to God, uh, this is to your glory. Uh, God, lose your presence uh, in the service. Uh, God, uh, let the ladder rain fall. Uh, I want you to be glorified. Uh, dances, uh, every time you dance, uh, dance to the glory of God. Uh, technicians, uh, when you balance the mics uh, and do the media ministry, uh, do it to the glory of God. Uh, is there anybody that understands uh, what I'm talking about? Uh, somebody ought to say, uh, God, it's me, it's me. Uh, not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh God. Uh, I want to do it uh, to your glory. Uh, God, if I ever stepped out of your will, uh, if I ever stepped out of your way, uh, forgive me, God. Uh, give me another chance. Uh, I'll be faithful uh, to my ministry. Give me one more chance because somebody said something to the Lord. Talk, my brother. Let them talk, my sister. They talked about Jesus. You're in good company. Say yeah. You ought to be so determined that you refuse to let the enemy talk you out of your position. You ought to let them know the old folks say the more you talk, I'm going to bend Thank you. 
shown for his name in serving the saints. In other words, our ministry first is to serve in God. Secondly, our ministry is to serve God. Serve the saints of God. Now look at somebody and say ministry.
You have got to understand, my friends, that your ministry first is to the Lord, then to the saints, and then to the people. And the way that you discover your shape for your ministry is according to your spiritual gifts. If you do not have the gift of hospitality, do not become an usher. If you don't like people, don't be a missionary. You need to change your attitude. You go bring somebody that didn't hear. <laughs> Serving dinners without tracks, without a word. No time to pray, just drop it off at the door, ring the doorbell. What about coming in, spending some time? Can I sit down? Can I pray with you? And it's not just the ushers and the missionary, it's everybody. Everybody. Everybody is standing. Everybody is standing. If you don't remember anything, remember, remember you have ministry. And you know what's happening? Can I tell y'all something? God has given us some things to do, some ministries, and you know what? We ain't doing it. Oh, I don't know why I had this in my spirit, but please, please forgive me. It takes an anointing to do anything in the house. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. When you don't have the anointing to do it, you get it done, but it doesn't glow. 